Thank you for the support. We'll be right back with the second hour. Vatican insider Leo Zagani going to be joining us for the balance of the hour. We're going to open the phones up for him in the last 20 minutes or so. You know, they spin all this and say, we got to take all these refugees because we bombed the Middle East. The very same politicians that launched those unpopular wars then use the giant hordes of people that they're advertising to come here as the pretext to take more of our liberties. And the United States is a nation of immigrants. Vatican insider Leo Zagami going to be joining us for the balance of the hour. We're going to open the phones up for him in the last 20 minutes or so. You know, they spin all this and say, we got to take all these refugees because we bombed the Middle East. The very same politicians that launched those unpopular wars then use the giant hordes of people that they're advertising to come here as the pretext to take more of our liberties. And the United States is a nation of immigrants. The original Native Americans, you know, came here from Asia across the Bering Strait land bridge. There's archaeological evidence showing that's the case. So humans do migrate. But you could say the Nazis were migrating into other countries in World War II by that yardstick. If you just say all migration is good, if I got an amoeba up my nose at Lake Travis and ate my brain as it kills people each year, would it be a migration? Yes. Would it be good? Yes. The amoeba migrated. It ate some brain and enjoyed itself. It had babies. It swam around gleefully. It had a good time. And all I'm getting at here is that the globalists have organized these movements now as political weapons. And that's why we've got to stand against it. And it's just so outrageous that the Pope would meet with an anchor baby in a staged event as she broke through the barricades. No, she was led by the police up to him in a stage managed event. I mean, it's just like the clock kid. It's turning out his sister got thrown out of school for saying she was going to blow the school up. Her dad's the guy that pulls stunts constantly. He didn't build the clock. It was the inside of a digital clock. He wouldn't say it wasn't a bomb. He had it timed to, you know, to supposedly go off the way it looked to freak everybody out. He wouldn't talk to the cops, so they'd had to take him to jail, thinking it was a bomb hoax, so they could run a larger hoax. This little kid's a hoax. The evidence is mounting. The clock kid's a hoax, and it's just all for the children. Oh, there aren't any racist or bad Muslims or, 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 or crazies. No, they're all good. No one's persecuting you. They're being persecuted. There's no anchor babies, you know, tens of thousands a month from China and other countries. Women coming here having kids. It's not a problem. And you've just got all these aggressive people who've been told it's kosher and that it's correct to hate the West. And then we're taught to hate ourselves in the West and just bend over, lay down, roll over, get on our knees, uh, assume the position. Anytime some arrogant foreigner, I don't care what color they are, starts shooting their fat mouth off. One time, I, again, it was with Paul Watson. I got footage of this, I ought to play it. Just filming a landmark. And a guy like 50, 60 yards away pulls up in his car, gets out with his wife. He's going in a hotel. And he's Arabic, and he runs over and gets in my face and says, how dare you videotape me? What are you doing? I said, sir, I'm just shooting footage of, you know, Big Ben or whatever. He gets in my face. I started screaming at him back. I said, go ahead and do something. I'm filming. And again, I've got a lot of Arab friends. That's a old classic statement. I've got a lot of black friends. No, the fact is, I went to college with folks from Iraq and places in high school. Good friends, nice people. Good, upstanding folks, weren't extremists, all this stuff. The point is, is that with political correctness, the left is taking immigrants, whether they be from Eastern Europe, Africa, the Middle East, Asia, wherever, and, man, they're putting chips on their shoulders. Instead of thank you for all this free stuff, used to immigrants showed up and said, thank you for the opportunity to have lower taxes. Thank you for the opportunity to have my own religion. No, it's like your white privilege is evil. I saw that Crowder piece that they aired on the news last night where they go to this feminist event and it's all like, we're fat, we're ugly, we stink, and we hate men, and we're taking over, and you'll do what we say. And it's just, it's like a cult of weirdos. Just a cult of crazy people who haven't succeeded in anything, have class envy, run by the left that want to just destroy everything.
and they're targeting the family, trying to ban it, and saying our kids belong to them, this giant consortium of misfits. We put out a 35-minute uh, documentary that we aired during the 28-hour broadcast last week that I shot with uh, Rob Dew and Buckley Hammond uh, in Rome about a month ago. And Leo Zagami, of course, is a documentary uh, filmmaker himself, uh, author, researcher. And I remember seeing his information probably six, seven, eight years ago and thinking, you know, this guy's speculating. I mean, I knew he'd been involved with the Vatican. I knew he'd been involved with some Masons high level, a lot of powerful Masonic groups uh, there in and around the Vatican. I knew a lot of what he was saying was accurate. I don't claim to be a Vatican expert, but from what I'd researched, but, you know, he said the Jesuits will put in a pope. Uh, it'll probably, you know, be the, this particular guy who's now Pope Francis. He said he, him or one other person. Uh, he said that they were going to blackmail with the pedophile scandals that they controlled uh, the Vatican, that they would announce world government. And I, 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 I saw him talk about it. I heard him talk about it. I saw him in Project Camelot, hour-long plus interviews. And people asked, what do you think of this guy? And I said, well... You know, I know they're not supposed to put a Jesuit in as the Pope. And uh, I said, I'll wait and see. Well, we wait and saw what happened. Uh, and indeed, uh, it did end up uh, unfolding that way. And so I want him to talk a, a little bit about himself, but then tell us what he thinks is coming next with all of this uh, with the Vatican. Because even if you're not a Catholic, there are a billion people plus that say they're Catholics. And clearly you can see the leadership of the church has been doing everything it can to destroy the Catholic church. And now that's accelerating. And now the liberal media that is always demonizing Catholics is suddenly praising it as if this guy can do no wrong and is a messiah. And years after Zagami talked about blackmail to bring in a Jesuit black pope, as he calls it, even the London Guardian had a story basically saying that that had happened. So here is that report. The core of, the, of what's going on, they are observing us now, Alex. You have to understand, everything that we are saying is being monitored. You know, when the Pope resigned what happened in the Vatican, there was a big storm and there was a lightning that uh, just went on top. You see, like this night, there's a uh, lightning, you see? Experts from the Vatican themselves admitted there is a very close link between pedophilia and Satanism. Then they used to have these ambulances, these fake ambulances parked in front of Termini Station, and they used to pick up these young Romanian kids, 14-year-old kids, and bring them directly into the Vatican. That's just the intro to that piece the demonic possession of the Vatican exposed. It's up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Now, again, there's a lot of questions I have for Mr. Zagami, but first of those points, I want him to just briefly talk about Pope Francis himself, where he came from, his history, his background, and then, Leo... I want you to break down your awakening, your experiences, and how you were able to predict that they would six, seven years ago, probably longer, time flies, eight years ago, predict that they would put a Jesuit for the first time ever, Pope, in charge, and you were even able to name who you thought it would probably be. Uh, so was that from your larger research, putting pieces together, or did you have inside sources? Because that is really stunning. It's inside sources because in 2005, uh, when we saw in April 2005 uh, the election of uh, Ratzinger, actually Ratzinger was just a minute, uh, but there was already an attempted placing of uh, Bergoglio as a pope. Uh, actually, at one point, they kind of opted on Ratzinger because it was the least problematic choice, uh, because the actual pink pope, uh, Tarcisio Bertone, who was then uh, cardinal of state, was trying to get elected himself. Uh, 
And so uh, to avoid uh, having Tarcisio Bertone, Cardinal Martini, who is this Jesuit, who actually uh, a few months before he died in June 2012, he asked um, Ratzinger to resign. And this is actually being confirmed also by a Jesuit, uh, Jesuit father who then uh, died uh, this year. Uh, he died uh, leaving this uh, testimony. He was uh, the main collaborator of Cardinal Martini, this important Jesuit and Cardinal of Milan. And he confirmed uh, uh, Carlo Maria Martini at one point uh, in uh, June 2012 uh, during the meeting of families, the one that now is going to take place in uh, Philadelphia. He, uh, he went uh, to Ratzinger and said, we can't do really much with the, this Curia, uh, you have to resign. Um, so if the Curia does not reform, it's the time to leave. That's the exact words he said that were reported by this Jesuit Silvano Fausti. So basically, here yeah, we are talking about facts that are proven. There is plenty of evidence. Uh, this evidence, of course, is not easy to find. Uh, I am an insider. I have my own experience. Maybe we'll talk about this later. But in any case, uh, Pope Francis escalated this time. He failed in 2005, but he eventually got in when uh, the scandals behind Ratzinger made it very easy for the Jesuits to say to him, just uh, uh, go aside because we have to take over the show. This is uh, synthetically what's been happening. Regarding the little girl that you were talking about, uh, you know that guy who picks her up, the bald guy with the glasses, who actually brings her to the Pope, you see her on the image, he's a very important guy. He is General Domenico Gianni. Uh, he is not wearing, his, of course, his uh, inspector general kind of divisa he has when he's in the Vatican, when he's uh, in America with the Pope. But he's a very high-level member of the Knights of Malta, and he takes care of the Pope's security. Also, it's completely rubbish that the Pope doesn't see TV and he makes this kind of monastic life for himself publicly, because I know from friends of Domenico Gianni that the Pope regularly watches TV and uh, he's like any other guy. They just want to make out of him a saint. The important thing today, after this address to Congress, I think you will agree with me, Alex, is to understand these people that he actually met Leo Zagami, hold on. Your Skype is breaking up, and, and we have a lot of new listeners tuning in. We can get into the inside baseball on this, but bottom line, we've had a Vatican coup. There had been infiltration. There had been problems before, but clearly there's been a takeover. Uh, after 1,800 years, the most anti-family, globalist, communist, socialist move ever. How are Catholics going to buy this when it's so different and so opposite uh, from what we've heard from other popes uh, and Catholic uh, doctrine. And what is the end game now? What does it signify that the Pope is calling for planetary government, that the Pope is calling for global carbon taxes, uh, and that the Pope is pushing all of this? Uh, what does it mean? Well, it's very clear from mentioning Thomas Merton and Dorothy Day. Do you know who these two characters are? These are communists. I mean, Thomas Merton... And Dorothy Day was accused herself of being a communist. He, he, he addressed these two people in Congress. I mean, it's quite obvious what he's doing. Uh, she advocated the Catholic economic theory of distributism, which basically is uh, this uh, uh, communism style that uh, sprang out of uh, the Jesuit creed. Uh, and, and of course, uh, I mean, there is plenty of evidence uh, for this, uh, who, who this uh, Thomas uh, Merton is. Uh, and he was not even that kind of a devout Catholic. He actually converted to Zen Buddhism. And, uh, and, and, and I mean, it's... it's, it's sure, it's we have the new shocked. Pope uh, pushing ecumenicalism, merging all the religions. What do you make of the headlines I saw last week in the Washington Times and others that there is a conservative rebellion inside the Vatican and that uh, cardinals have been going and warning him? Well, unfortunately, there is, uh, I mean, to this conservative rebellion, a very strong opposition. 
uh, people who we are now seeing in the United States leading the Pope. And one of these people, the key people, uh, is uh, Carl A. Anderson, who uh, led the, the procession of the Knights of Columbus yesterday during the canonization of the new saint. And he is also one of the main advisors for the World Meeting of Families, uh, which is taking place in Philadelphia. So basically, the Knights of Columbus lobbied for this new saint.